everyone. Well this week I just wanted to show a little project that I was uh, my younger brother Mike loves to come up with these uh, repair mod projects. He collects a lot of the retro video games and I'm an engineer and I enjoy working on the old systems and building up new retro systems. So what we have here is a Sega Master System 1. This is the original release which is uh, came with the 3D glasses and the uh, light gun. It's actually really cool accessories. This was actually the second home console we had growing up. The first one was the Atari 2600 and this is a Sega Master System. Uh, stylistically it's fantastic, isn't it? You have this wonderful asymmetrical design. Um, it's kind of pyramid shaped. Uh, it's got this fantastically useless um, uh, flow diagram on the front, which is shows you the place a cartridge or card in. It's actually a neat system. Actually, take a cartridge or a card. The uh, Sega systems in Japan that came before this, I believe, it was the. Uh, Mark II or the Mark III, I think it's a Mark II, um, use the card, not cartridges. So it's able to accept both. And f for this American one, this card was mostly used for the 3D glasses, which is, uh, I'll do another video on those later, how those work. Kind of a neat system. But this system is um, not the one I actually grew up with. This is a, a recently purchased, which is why I'm wearing these gloves. Whoever owned this before, uh, well, was almost certainly a heavy pipe smoker, so it really smells of tobacco smoke, pipe smoke. My uh, grandfather smoked pipes, so it kind of brings back memories. Um, the system is very simple. You had a reset button, pause button on the front, power button, two DB9 uh, joystick connectors, bottom, really doesn't show all that much. It's your standard serial number, model number. This is a model 3010. Um, made in China. Boy, they make stuff a long time out in China. Uh, There's a little expansion slot here to add on. I'll delve into that in a little bit. Why I actually have the system. And a uh, nice feature I like is it's got your usual AC adapter. Radio frequency out. Hate RF out. It always looks terrible. Even back in the day, it looked terrible, kids. Trust me, kids. Hooking up those old switch boxes through RF always sucked. Always looked terrible. Always sucked. This system's nice because it has an AV out slot, which means all you need is a little three-dollar cable to plug it in here, and you have um, audio video out. I think it even has S video out. I think it has Chroma and Luma separate on this connector. So if you want to do S video off of here, you probably could. Have to check on that later. But the reason I got the system. So here we have expansion slot. No one really, it was never really used, but what they do, what they have come up with, the reason it was made is the original Sega Master System, the original Sega Master System had uh, what's known as PCM sound, which is just a, a pulse with modulated sound. It's your classic beepy sound. Nintendo used it, Sega used it, all the older systems use it. However, they did have the option of adding, particularly in Japan, an FM module, which is a, um, it's kind of like a MIDI card for your, uh, for your game console. It gave you much better, uh, music. The sound, I don't think really made that much difference, but music made a huge difference. So instead of simple square wave sound, not to get too technical, but square wave sound is that beepy sound you're used to. An FM modulator has nice rounded sound. It has samples. It sounds much better. So this little card here, which is purchased, is going to be installed into this expansion slot over here. So um, I'll do a jump cut in a minute and uh, start taking apart to the master system and show you where it's going to go. All right, I'm back. All right, take apart these. Uh, the Sega Master System is very similar to a lot of old systems. Uh, they had the Oso High Tech uh, anti tamper screws that can be defeated with. Well, there are no anti tamper screws, it's just number two Phillips screwdriver. So, 
six screws. Either whistle a happy song or watch me unscrew six Phillips screws. They're self tapping. Self tapping Phillips screws, really typical of the time. That way they didn't have to put uh, metal inserts in the um, plastic housing. So they could just screw in and it forms its own threads as it's going into the plastic and uh, lets you. It cuts down the labor. It's not unusual. Modern systems use the same darn thing often because inserts are expensive and self tapping screws are cheap. Well, we can take out the old six screws. Hopefully, there's only six screws. Sometimes they like to hide a screw. Yeah, there might be a screw in the center here underneath the uh, serial number. A little hint for you. Anyone's doing any mod work, if you're wondering why the heck can't I get this system open, it's because they hit a screw under the under the um, under the label. Let's see what happens if I try to take it apart. I'll find out in a second if it's, that's the case or not. Well, maybe not. kids I'm doing this without consulting any web pages so don't try this at home or try this at home it's not a warranty who cares okay open it up here's the top lid it's really just mechanical extenders for the buttons and you can see that's where the self tapping screws went in and there was no screw in the center yay all right is my helpful bit of advice, try not to lose your screws. No. It's an exciting video, I know. Put those in there for now. Alright. Ah. You might be wondering, what is this? That is the RF Shield. The FCC, the Federal Communications Commission of the United States, has very strict rules of how much emitted radiation could come off of a game console. And all the old systems, and you open them up, you're going to see this this metal shield inside. And because these machines used RF out, which means it basically has a little mini TV transmitter built into every one, so they had this shield these things like crazy to keep to actually pass the uh, what they call radiated emissions uh, for you electronics nerds out there. So uh, the system is uh, relatively clean. Looking down inside, there's nothing too uh, too ghastly inside. The other reason I have the system is all oh, my favorite task: recapping systems. And these old systems, um, what causes poor sound. Ironic because I'm far away from the microphone right now. Uh, what causes f poor sound is um, dried up electrolytic capacitors. And uh, electrolytic capacitors are these little can shaped things you'll see all over the boards. And um, there's, there's something called electrolyte inside. And that electrolyte actually dries up over time and when it dries up it changes the capacitance. The capacitance uh, capacitors work by storing electricity in a electric field. It's probably way over the head of a lot of the viewers but electric field is uh, there's, there's two metal plates separated by an insulator and the insulator is what breaks down on these capacitors. So as the insulation breaks down, the capacitance, which is measured in farads, uh, changes. And these old systems relied on a lot of capacitors. I mean, this is this is the capacitor replacement kit, and I think there's about probably about 23 capacitors in here. I just did a Sega Genesis, and that thing had a ton of caps in it too. Ironically, some of the older systems, like the um, Atari 2600s, Atari 7800, thank goodness for universal screws. Um, they actually used very little capacitors, or the capacitors they did use were um, either mylar or ceramic. Mylar or ceramic caps, the ceramic caps are a little, uh, 
a little free electronics lesson here for you, everyone out there. Uh, mylar cap, uh, sorry, uh, ceramic capacitors, you'll recognize them. They're little uh, kind of off yellow discs, quite small, maybe about two or three millimeters across, maybe even smaller. Usually they're yellow to designate that they're um, ceramic or they're mylar. And mylar caps usually have a green outer coat. The nice thing about mylar or ceramic is they don't dry out, but they have limited capacity. So if you have an old system, the ear doesn't turn on, or the sound is all messed up, that screw is different, or the sound's all messed up, it's because the capacitors have dried out. Let's see. There's a little clips right here. I'm doing this all live, folks. A little persuasion. You can see all the high-tech tools you need to take one of these systems apart. There are a couple screwdrivers. I hate these old shields. Oh, by the way, if you ever work on these systems, you wouldn't believe how sharp these shields are. I mean, they are they are literally razor sharp. That's one of the other reason I, I'm glad I'm wearing gloves is because this will cut through your hand like like a razor blade. I mean, they are literally razor sharp, and you can. I've gotten cut real good on this uh, shielding material before. I almost got it free. This is exciting viewing. I'm sure this is all going to go viral someday. I should be so lucky. Okay, so cursed shield been removed. The upper shield is actually a lower shield too. Okay, that's the other screws on the other side. Alright, so we have we have the motherboard. So, here's the motherboard. That's a, you can see it's a single board system. Power base NTSC. And this was manufactured 24th of April 1988. So, happy birthday say a master system. I think today is the 24th or the 25th that I'm recording this, so it's it's birthday. All right. Now, if you look at the system, you can see there's a lot of capacitors. Electrolytic, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Probably some more. I guess yeah, another fourteen, fifteen hidden under there. Uh, like I said, these are electrolytic capacitors. These little suckers that dry out. And cause um, your system to basically not work anymore or perform poorly. Uh, well, also I was talking about uh, ceramic capacitors. You can see these little disc shaped guys here. Those are ceramics. Ceramic, capac ceramic capacitors generally don't uh, dry out. So you don't usually have to worry about those. And I don't see any mylar. And if you want any more free electronics lessons here, Let's identify components. These are momentary push buttons. This is the crystal. This is what actually generates the frequency, uh, the clock frequency for the entire motherboard. So if you ever hear something in so many megahertz, or gigahertz nowadays, uh, it's generated by this uh, crystal. It's a piece of quartz crystal. When you hit the crystal with an electric current, it generates a frequency out. I won't get too much on horology now. All right, let's see what else I can show you here. Uh, free lesson here. Those are resistors. You can tell by the banding. Uh, you can actually read what the values are because it's like red, red, red is a 2.2K. Yeah, red is 2. Anyway, uh, you ever wonder what some of the other things are? Uh, these are little EMI isolators. Uh, is the, they're probably opto isolators is what they call them. So uh, the signal comes in here. This is where the joysticks actually plug into. These guys are used to protect from static and uh, outside interference coming in and blowing out the motherboard. Uh, of course you have all your CPU, you all your chips here. This is your legendary Zilog Z80. Z80 was an 8086 clone made by Zilog Electronics. This is an actual Zilog in here. Here's a Sony chip. The Sony, you got a couple Sony chips in here. These, those Sony chips actually were used for, um, for video and for sound, usually for sound. Custom Sega chips probably have the ROM on here. 
probably the video processor here would be my guess. A couple NEC chips, that's got to be RAM. NEC has always been a huge manufacturer of RAM. If you ever come across these weird green looking things that look like resistors, those actually aren't resistors, those are actually uh, fuses or fusible links. Uh, they usually have a resistance value, but they're actually fuses. So you know, sometimes if you have a dead system, uh, it could be that little green guys right there blowing out. There's another green one over here, and a little green one under, hiding under here. There's actually fuses in here to help protect. Actually, I take it back. Those are inductors that are L. <laughs> All right, I'm, I am an electronics engineer, so you're going to get a free lesson. You have R, L, and C. L is inductance. C is capacitance. R is resistance. So those are inductors, capacitors, resistors. And they all work together to make a functioning system. So the little board in question is going to be installed right here. It's in pretty good shape. Uh, it'll be installed here. And I'm actually going to go through and replace all these capacitors with my handy capacitor replacement kit, and my solder remover, and my trusty soldering iron. So I'll probably jump cut later when I start replacing the capacitors and installing the, um, I'll actually go in and install the new FM card. But for now, that's a good intro to how the heck to get into the original Sega Master System and a slight uh, electronics lessons so uh, hold, stand, hold on for uh, future videos as I move forward in terms of um, re uh, modifying and updating the system and I'll come out with a uh, final video once I'm done.